thousands turn out for Enniskillen's last farewell. Chief Constable warns of more IRA killings to come. Unionists take agreement protest to London. Good evening. Also tonight we talk to a 15-year-old boy, one of those badly injured in the Enniskillen explosion. And later in the programme we'll be looking at a couple of items in the Belfast Festival which got underway on Tuesday. But first, today's news. Enniskillen today buried the last two victims of the Poppy Day Massacre. In what was possibly the largest turnout for any of the funeral services, thousands of mourners attended the burial of Billy and Nessie Mullen, who are both in their 70s. For the third day running, shops and offices in the town were closed as a mark of respect. This report from Jeannie Johnston. The people of Enniskillen turned out in their thousands for this, the last of the funerals. The wound in this town's heart no easier as this grim week progresses. Shops and businesses which had reopened this morning closed again as a mark of respect to Billy Mullen, the local chemist, and his wife Nessie, who were both in their 70s. Former Presbyterian minister in Enniskillen, the Reverend Ivan Hull, gave the address and spoke of his feelings on returning to the town. As Margaret and I visited this morning and yesterday, people at home and in hospital, people we knew and who were our friends, we have felt something of the pain and the hurt that is everywhere. It is human to step back and ask, why, why, why? For the Reverend David Couples, it was his third funeral service in as many days. He tried to find new words of comfort for yet more bereaved sons and daughters. The cortege passed the fashion shop owned by the Mullins' daughter, Margaret. The funeral had had to be delayed until she could fly home from a safari holiday, which she'd won in a window display competition. Hundreds of letters of sympathy have been arriving for the bereaved families, many containing donations to the appeal fund, which now stands at £25,000. Among them, a letter from Ain Gibb, the man who lost both his parents in the Hungerford massacre. He said he wanted to express his shock and horror at what he called this senseless act of violence. Meanwhile, 17 of the injured are still in hospital. Tonight, a special mass will be held in St. Michael's Roman Catholic Church in Enniskillen, where Cardinal Thomas Sophie will say prayers for the victims. Last night, around a thousand people of all religions and from all walks of life gathered to keep vigil at the war memorial. The Lakeland town has buried its dead. Now the townspeople must gather up the threads of their shattered lives and look to the future. But today they can only look back at the images of Enniskillen's blackest week. Chief Constable Sir John Herman has warned that the IRA are planning fresh killings in a bid to divert attention from the Enniskillen massacre. Sir John, who will be interviewed on Police 6 after this programme, claimed that young people are turning away from the IRA who are relying on older terrorists. But he's warned the provisionals aren't a spent force. Ivan Little spoke to Sir John this morning and first asked him about newspaper reports suggesting that the RUC know the name of the Enniskillen bombers. I'm not uh, in a position to discuss that at all, nor would I, nor would it be proper. I will say that we are pursuing it diligently and we are asking for total cooperation. The bomb that was defused in Pettigo, you've linked that to Enniskillen. Do you believe that the remains of that bomb could give you vital clues? I can't say that either. I will say that it was an equally vicious bomb, very cunningly concealed. And I have already mentioned uh, uh, that the, far from having any sense of uh, regrets uh, as to the murder of 11 people, superb people from Enniskillen. They endeavoured to plant a 1,200 pound bomb in Belfast that same evening. I mean, those apologists and provisional Sinn Féin cannot seek to find refuge from their culpability in all of this. There have been reports that Sinn Féin have been trying to distance themselves from what happened in Enniskillen. Do you perceive any split at all within the Republican movement? No, I do not. They're the one and the same. 
the IRA sources have said that what happened in Enniskill is a disaster for their organisation, but they'll get over it. Do you agree with that assessment? And they will look for more murders as quickly as possible to conceal this crime in the minds of people, and they must not this time forget that horror of, of Enniskillen. They must not forget it. The population must not forget it, and they must not allow provisional Sinn Féin and Pyra to forget it. You've said that you've received cooperation from right across the divide. Yes. Do you believe that nationalists are turning against the IRA then? The vast majority of, of nationalists are not supportive of the provisional IRA. The vast majority. We're dealing with what I've referred to before as the rump of an extreme Republican movement. That is all. And they are losing support, not gaining it. And how could any reasonable God-fearing people give them any support in the future after that carnage. But do you believe that the remainder of the support, the few people that are supporting on this, could be a turning point for them as well? There are some people who cannot be turned, and there are extremists on both sides. Let us make it clear, these uh, senseless assassinations which are taking place have got to stop also. It's not all on one side, but Para carried by far the greatest culpability, responsibility for what is happening. Reports have suggested that the explosives at Enniskill may have come from a forerunner to the gunship, Exxon. Is that... Uh, that's speculation, and I wouldn't want to speculate at this time. But do you believe that there have been four ships preceding the accident? I believe that suggested? the Para have got a considerable amount of uh, munitions at their disposal. And I must say that we and the security forces must have all the resources we require. We must not be deprived of them in the interest of this community. With the accident losses and the setback that Enniskill must inevitably be, do you believe that there is any sense that the IRA are on their last legs? No, they're not. They are vicious. They have got uh, people who have been murdering and bombing over many years. They're relying more on those older school people because the younger people are beginning to have more sense. But no, they are certainly not a spent force. We need the total cooperation of two governments, from Dublin, from London, and Northern Ireland, to deal with this threat because it is an all-Ireland threat. You're satisfied that that cooperation is forthcoming? That cooperation must be forthcoming in the interest of the population of this island. A 15-year-old schoolboy who was so badly injured by the Enniskillen bomb that he has a metal cage to keep the bones of his face together spoke today from his hospital bed about the courage of those who rescued him. Stephen Ross, who was in 